This is going to be a short review lecture on integration techniques. So maybe you've taken calculus a while ago um, and would like to review some of the uh, most important integration techniques. And obviously I can't talk about all of the integration techniques, but um, I'm going to focus on the ones that come up most often, um, in particular in the course of on differential equations. Um, so let me just uh, let me write down what, what those are. Maybe we'll start out with um, what I'll call basic integrals. By basic, I don't necessarily mean they're easy, but um, these are going to be ones that we can do simply by reversing the, uh, the rules for differentiation. Um, and then we're going to talk about U substitution. U substitution. And then integration by parts. And finally, um, we're going to look at the method of partial fractions. These are all very versatile methods and can be used in many different situations. Um, another notable technique that I'm not going to talk about is trigonometric substitutions. Um, those tend to be only useful in maybe a few uh, situations where you have a very specific form of the integral. And um, honestly, often it's um, when you have that form, it's, it's best to just look up uh, in a table uh, what the answer is going to be. Um, but um, yeah, so just to make the video uh, a little bit shorter, I'm going to omit uh, trigonometric substitutions. Um, okay, well, let's start with basic integrals. What do I mean by that? Um, so, okay. Um, yeah, so for one, um, some integrals can be done by just reversing the uh, rules for uh, derivatives or differentiation. Let me just give you an example of that. So what if we want to do the, the integral of x to the 4 dx? I'm always going to be talking about um, uh, uh, indefinite integrals like this where we don't have any, um, any bounds of integration. So in other words, antiderivatives. Um, okay, well, what's this going to be? Well, let's really quick over here maybe recall, how, how would you take the derivative of something like x to the 4? Well, you do, you do so using the so-called power rule. So you bring the exponent down as a coefficient, and then the exponent uh, is reduced by 1. And so if we want to do the integral of x to the 4, we just do this in reverse. It's going to be x to the 5. But what do we need in the front? We need a 1 fifth now. Because, see, when we now take the derivative of this, the 5 is going to come down, and we, we want that to cancel out. Um, OK, so, so yeah, in general, how would you do x to the n? Let's write the general formula. Well, it's going to be x to the n plus 1. And I need to also divide by n plus 1, just like we did above. And, well, I should also mention I should have an arbitrary constant in all of the examples I do. I might forget that sometimes. Um, but, but actually, this doesn't always work. So this works actually for every value of n except for, for minus 1. Right? Because then this doesn't make sense. We have a zero in the denominator. So what would the integral of x to the minus 1 be? And you might have seen this. Uh, well, 1, 1 over x is, is the derivative of the natural log. So this is going to be the natural log of x. And then plus c. We can put in absolute values here if we want this to be defined on the same domain as, as this. Um, OK. Uh, well, what are some other? basic integrals, so an exponential integral of e to the x is just going to be e to the x. Um, what about something like uh, sine x? Well, it's going to be, it's not exactly going to be cosine x because the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, right? So we need a minus sign there. Um, again, these are going to have yeah, these arbitrary constants. Um, Okay, and I could write down, you know, 10 or 20 more of these, but um, maybe I'll just go to the, to the next method. So um, this also includes maybe uh, just integrals you can look up in a table. Uh, so the next method is going to be U substitution. 
use substitution. This is a very general method. Um, and the idea behind use substitution, so the idea is we're going to try to reverse the chain rule. The chain rule tells you how to take the derivative of a composition of functions. So what is the chain rule that it says, um, well, there are lots of ways we can write it, but let's say we have a composition of two functions, f composed with g. Then the derivative of this composition is going to be, you, you take the, the derivative of f, you're pretending that g is a variable that you're, you're differentiated with respect to. And then you have to multiply by the derivative of that inner function with respect to x. So that's the chain rule. Um, here's an example of this. So let's just take the derivative of, let's just do a simple one. So e to the 4x. Okay, what's the derivative of that? Well, uh, it's going to be e to the 4x, but see, instead, uh, I, I don't just have e to the x, I have e to the 4x. So I need to multiply by the derivative of that inner function 4x, which is 4. So it's going to be 4 e to the 4x. And notice that 4 is coming down for a different reason than, uh, than this 4 up here. Right? This is the power rule. This is, this is actually the chain rule. So you don't want to get these, these confused. This is a, a um, monomial, uh, whereas this is an exponential function. Um, OK, so, so we want to do this in reverse. Well, let me start with an example where it's, um, it's maybe something already in this form. So let's do the integral of, uh, I don't know, let's do a 2x times e to the power of x squared. Okay. Um, what is this going to be? Um, well, you might see that actually that 2x is the derivative of x squared, right? So this is actually, if we understand how the chain rule works, we can immediately write down the answer. It's going to be e to the x squared because the derivative of this is e to the x squared, right? Um, but I, I don't just have x up there, I have x squared. So I need to multiply by the derivative of that inner function, x squared, which is 2x. Um, so that's the answer. Um, but what we want to do now is, is sort of put this into a general framework, where maybe if it's not so easy to see that we have a function and its derivative, uh, we can still um, use this idea of reversing the chain rule. And the way you do that is with, yeah, the so-called U substitution. So um, let me do it for this example. So what I, what I want to do is I want to set U equal to part of the, this part of the problem. So I'm going to set U equal to this. And then uh, DU DX is going to be 2X, or, or in other words, DU is going to be 2X DX. And so what I can actually do is change variables in the integral. I'm going to change from x to u. And so my integral actually just becomes, um, see this, this e, to the, e to the x squared becomes e to the u. And then the rest of it is just du. Right? That, that whole thing is just du. So my integral is just e to the u du, which is very easy to do. That's just e to the u um, plus c. But what is u? u is x squared. So it's e to the x squared plus c. So this is just sort of a way of formalize what we, what we observed here. And um, let, let's, let's, uh, let's do a couple more examples. So we'll start with an easier one. Um, let's do e to the 4x. Let's integrate this this time. We took the derivative up here. How do you integrate this? Um, well, you might be able to just write down what it is, but um, let's, let's try to use this framework. So um, here, here I'm going to set u equal to 4x, and du is just going to be uh, 4, right? 4 dx. And so my integral is just going to become, um, well, what is it going to become? So uh, I have e to the u, but d, uh, see, I don't have that 4 um, in, my, in my integrand here. Um, but that's okay, because the second one actually tells me that uh, I'm going to solve for dx as uh, one-fourth du. 
Now I'm just going to replace dx with one fourth du. So I have a one fourth that appears here. This substitution just automatically um, makes that one fourth uh, appear. And we get uh, one fourth e to the u. That's the integral of that. But u is, uh, well, that's plus c. What is u? u is 4x. So one fourth e to the 4x. Okay. Um, okay, so to, maybe to really show the idea and to show, you know, all the possible things that can happen, let's do a hard example. So um, here's, here's a harder example. Uh, 1 over, um, let's do 1 plus uh, the square root of x. Okay, so how would we integrate this? You can think about this for a while, and it's not so easy to see. And it, uh, in fact, um, I'm, I'm not even really sure if I'm going to use u substitution, what I should call u, right? Again, this example, I see uh, x squared and a 2x, right? So, yeah, it's very natural to call u x squared because I see du already being multiplied, right, as part of the problem. Whereas here, I mean, the... Uh, we just have to sort of pick something and hope that it works out the best. Um, but like I said, this method is very versatile, so often it does work out. Often we're going to get an integral that is simpler than what we started with. Okay, so I would really like if I can get 1 over u, right? Because I know how to do that, that integral, right? There's no square root in it anymore. So I'm going to call u equal to, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, set u equal to 1 plus square root of x. Um, the problem is that du is, well, derivative of 1 is just 0, but a derivative of x, uh, square root of x is going to be, so this is x to the 1 half, its derivative is going to be um, x to the negative 1 half times a 1 half, right? Or in other words, uh, 1 over 2 square root of x dx. And the trouble is that this doesn't really appear in the problem at all. It's not being multiplied by this. So it's not even obvious that u substitution should work here. Well, let's, let's go ahead with this anyway, so... Uh, just to see what happens. Uh, well, what does my integral become? It's going to become, um, well, 1 over u, right? But dx, I'm going to, again, again, just like I did above, I'm going to use the second relation. I say dx is 2 times the square root of x du, right? So it's 2 times square root of x du. Um, but I have another problem, right? I have x and u. I, I need to get rid of the square root of x. Um, luckily, this first relation here tells me how to do that, right? So this tells me that x square root of x is um, is is u minus one. So let's go ahead and replace the square root of x with u minus one. We get um, we get two over u times u minus one du. And it wasn't obvious that any of this is going to work, but we actually have something that's simpler than what we started with. There's no square root anymore. And we just end up with uh, 2 minus 2 over u du. And that's going to be um, u, uh, sorry, 2u minus 2 times the natural log of u. Um, and finally, yeah, what is u? u is 1 plus square root of x. So our, our answer is going to be 2 times 1 plus square root of x minus 2 times natural log of 1 uh, plus square root of x plus an arbitrary constant. Um, okay, great. Maybe we should go on to the next uh, technique, which is integration by parts. Integration by parts. Well, if the idea of u substitution was to reverse the chain rule, the idea of integration by parts is to reverse the product rule. Um, but this actually turns out to be, um, again, yeah, even more versatile than you might expect at first. Okay, so... Um, 
well, what what's the product rule? So the pro let me write that over here. So the product rule for derivatives is um, so you have a product of two functions f times g, and I want to take its derivative. When you get f times g prime plus f prime times g. Well, integration by parts. So the formula for integration by parts is if you have an integral of the form u dv, that is uv minus the integral of v du. And I say, well, wait, how does this how does this relate to that? Like, why is there a minus there and a plus there? Well, if you take if you take the uh, the antiderivative of this, you just get f g equals, and you put integral signs on these. And if you just solve for one of these, then you, you just end up with exactly this formula. So it's just a product rule in reverse. Um, but so, so this is going to be our starting integral here. We have to take our integral, write it in the form u dv, and then we can replace that with this, which actually involves another integral, but hopefully that integral is going to be easier to, to evaluate than the one we started with. Okay, so... Um, but now I want to talk about, yeah, how do you actually use this effectively? Okay, so it's, it's one thing to have a formula, but um, it's useless unless you have some feel of you know, how to actually use it. So uh, I want to start off with maybe the most typical example. So here's a typical example. It's always the first example that comes up when you, when you do integration by parts. And that's uh, something like x times uh, exponential, say e to the 4x. Okay. Um, Notice we have two functions multiplied together. That's one thing we're looking for. And they don't really have anything to do with each other. Right? So like the derivative of 4x is not x. So it's like we shouldn't, we, we're not really thinking about this, uh, this idea of using u substitution. Um, and the idea is that we want to pick uh, something that, that we're going to call u, and then the rest of it's going to be dv. And so maybe I'll write down here. So we're going to pick u, we're going to pick dv, and then we're going to need also v and du. We can just calculate those from u and dv. And if you look at this formula, this integral involves du, the derivative of u. So ideally, I want to choose u to be something that becomes simpler when you take its derivative. Um, that's the main thing to think about when you're you know, trying to use integration by parts. So what part of this becomes simpler when I take its derivative? Well, uh, the x, right? Because x just becomes 1. e to the 4x just kind of stays the same, right? It becomes 4e to the 4x. So I'm going to take u to be x, and then uh, dv just has to be the rest of it, right? I have no choice. Well, then du is going to be 1 dx. And v is going to be uh, e to the 4x times 1 fourth. We did that one before, actually. And now I'm just going to copy down uh, the right side of this formula. So I have, uh, what is this, 1 fourth x e to the 4x. That's uv minus uh, integral of v du. Right, so minus um, integral of 1 fourth. I'll take the 1 fourth out of the integral because I can do that. Uh, minus that integral. And indeed, this is an easier integral than the one we started with. So th this method was successful. And our answer is going to be uh, this part minus, uh, we're going to have another one fourth that comes out from the chain rule. So 1 16th e to the 4x plus c. Um, okay, so that's that's a really typical example. Maybe do a less typical example, which is uh, this is another sort of famous integral. So the the integral of natural log of x. How would you actually do that? So the we talked about before how the integral of one over x is natural log of x. But what if you want to take the integral of natural log of x? How would you do that? And believe it or not, uh, the way you do it is with integration by parts, even though there's no product here at all, right? Um, dx. Well, actually, uh, we, <laughs> you know, we can write this as a product. We can call this 1 times natural log of x. 
And now I'm going to try to choose part of this to be u and part of it to be dv, and then hope that this integral becomes something different that maybe I can do. And in this case, I notice that natural log becomes, well, arguably simpler, right? Because uh, its derivative is one over x. And then dv has to be the rest, which is one dx, which means v is just going to be uh, x. So what does this become? It becomes uh, x ln x, right, uv, minus v du, but v, v du is x over x, right, which is just one. So that was pretty lucky. Oh, we just end up with one. And, uh, and uh, yeah, the integral of that is just going to be x. And we have plus a constant. Um, okay, let's, let's do a hard one, so. Um, so at the same time, this is, this is a hard example, but it shows another typical idea that's often useful. So this is going to be e to the x times cosine 2x. Okay. Well, if you recall my advice from, from, uh, from this example, how to choose what u is, right, you might not be so sure what to choose for u here because none of these become simpler, really. The, the e to the x just stays the same. The cosine has become some kind of sine. It's not really simpler. Um, so, so, so it's not obvious that we're going to get anything um, that's easier to evaluate. Um, but nevertheless, I'm just going to choose u to be well, the cosine. Um, I also wanted to stress, so like, um, if you're having a hard time doing certain integrals, or you're not sure what method to use. Um, often you just have to do a bunch of trial and error. <laughs> um, I mean, this example that we saw, it's not obvious that u substitution is going to work, but you just have to try it and see if you get something uh, simpler. Same here, it's not obvious that integration by parts is going to work. In fact, it seems like it shouldn't work, um, but I'm just gonna try it and see what happens. And uh, we're gonna be pleasantly surprised uh, in this case. So what is dv is going to be the, the other part here. And so v is going to be e to the x, uh, du is going to be minus uh, 2 sine 2x. So this is going to become uh, uv, which is e to the x uh, cosine 2x, minus v du. v du has a minus sign in it, so I'm just going to uh, write my, uh, plus instead of minus a negative. And that's going to be 2 e to the x sine 2x. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, great. Well, uh, we're stuck with something that looks just like the original, except with a sine. Um, but uh, I'm going to do the same thing. So <laughs> I'm going to set u equal to sine 2x. You might think this is a little bit crazy. We're just going to be going in circles. Um, but... Uh, something really, really, uh, really cool is going to happen. So um, let's just write down the derivative. And uh, dv is going to be e to the x dx. And I don't have space here. Let me just write it down here. So this integral here will become e to the x sine 2x minus uh, integral v du. So minus 2 times uh, e to the x cosine 2x dx. Um, and what are we left with here? Well, this is our original problem, right? That integral there is the same as this integral here. Um, but that's actually a good thing, believe it or not. Because notice they don't just cancel out, right? This one is going to have a coefficient of of, uh, of minus four, right? And, and, and so it's, it's not just going to cancel out. Um, and so what I can do now um, is, is call this i, just to make the notation easier. So that's the integral I want to solve for. And 
just rewrite this. So i is going to equal, well, this function here, plus 2 e to the x sine 2x, minus 4 times i again. And do you see what we can do next? What do we want to do? We want to solve for this integral i. That's what we're trying to figure out. Well, I'm just going to move uh, this to the other side, and I get 5i equals, um, equals this. Plus, well, yeah, 5i equals that, so i is going to equal 1 fifth of e to the x cosine 2x plus 2 fifths e to the x sine 2x. And that's the answer. So very, very cool. Um, you can add an arbitrary constant also. Uh, just wanted to do that one because, again, this is a, this is a, a, a hard but typical idea uh, that comes up, and, and, and this integral actually comes up uh, quite often. Um, okay, so, so that's integration type parts. Um, let's, let's close out by looking at, um, at partial fractions. So maybe I'll just, uh, partial fractions, it, there are a lot of intricacies. Um, but the idea is that, so uh, this isn't really reversing any particular rule, um, but this is, um, um, is we want to find, uh, uh, we want to integrate rational functions. What do I mean by rational functions? That's a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Those come up quite a lot. Okay. We know how to integrate polynomials. We just use uh, the power rule, uh, this rule here. Um, but what if we want to do polynomial divided by a polynomial? Uh, so for example, let's suppose we have x divided by a quadratic, x squared minus 5x plus 6. And again, I'm just going to try to do a couple quick examples, so I'll show as many ideas as possible. Um, okay, well, uh, notice that this denominator can be factored. X minus, uh, yeah, x minus 2 times x minus 3. And, um, well, I don't know how to do this integral. However, what if I, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of the integral sign for now. I'm just going to look at this fraction. I should mention, actually, partial fractions, it's not necessarily even an integration technique. It's more just an algebra technique for rewriting a, a fraction like this as a sum of simpler fractions. So what if I could rewrite this as um, a sum of two fractions? So something over x plus 2 plus something over x plus 3. And uh, adding fractions is a complicated process, right? You have to find a common denominator. It's, it's harder than multiplying fractions. Um, but this could be the common denominator, right? So let's say I start with something here, something in my numerator a, uh, b, it'd be nice if those are constants, right? So I'll say a and b are constants. And the goal is I want to figure out what a and b I can choose so that when I add these two fractions together, I get x in my numerator, right, over the, well, this, of course, I'm going to get this in my denominator because that's my obvious common denominator here. Um, so how do you find a and b? That's the question. Well, um, Let's just find a common denominator here. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by x minus 3 over x minus 3, right? I'm going to multiply this one by x minus 2 over x minus 2. And what do I end up with? Uh, my numerator is going to be a times x minus 3. So ax minus 3a, and then plus that numerator, plus bx minus 2b. And my denominator is just going to be x minus 2 times x minus 3. You keep the same denominator. And I want that to equal this. I want that to equal x, uh, x over that same denominator. So I want the numerators to be equal. And you might think, well, wait a second. We, have, we sort of have too many variables here, right? We have a and b, but we just have one equation. Well, that's not exactly right. We actually have two equations because I want this to be the same function on both sides. 
right? So, so like this X, how can I get that X? Um, I, I could only get that from these X terms, right? These constant terms here don't contribute anything to that X because they're just unlike terms. So if I look at the X terms on both sides, on this side, I have one X and on this side, I have AX plus BX. So that means one S to equal A plus B. And if I look at the constant terms, well, I don't have any constant term on the, uh, t uh, sorry, terms. I don't have any constant term on the left side, right? So zero is going to equal, uh, well, I do on the right side, but at minus three A minus two B has to just uh, cancel out. So I actually get two equations and uh, I am left with a system of equations here. So I have to solve that system. How do we do that? Uh, well, there are lots of ways to do it, but maybe I can solve the second one for uh, B, let's say. So minus, or two B equals minus three A. What does that tell me? That tells me, um, it tells me B equals minus three, three over two A. I'll plug that in for B in the first equation. So as one A minus three halves A is, uh, is uh, minus one half a, so it tells me one equals minus one half a, which tells me a equals uh, equals just minus two. Um, and then b, yeah, and then b equals three, right? Because minus two plus three equals one. Okay, um, how does this help me? Well, I now know I can rewrite this just algebraically as my, my, this is minus two. Uh, let me let me rewrite this integral. In fact, so it's minus two over x minus two, plus three over x minus three. Dx. So again, I want to emphasize like this, I haven't done any integration yet, right? I've just done algebra to rewrite this, but the idea is it makes the integral easier to do, right? Because I know how to do these integrals. These are just gonna be natural logs. plus three times a natural log of X minus three plus a arbitrary constant. Okay. Um, so that's the idea. You just start with maybe a complicated fraction um, and use this method to uh, write it as a sum of simpler fractions where you know how to take the integrals. Um, so let's do maybe one more, one more example, a more complicated example, and we'll call it a day. Uh, so this is going to be, um, Let's see, let's do, uh, let's have a one in the numerator and then let's do X cubed minus, or let's do X cubed plus uh, X DX. Okay. Again, I look at this integral, I have no idea how to do it. Um, you can try use substitution, maybe it doesn't work. Integration by parts doesn't work. Um, so, but I see a, a fraction, right? So I see a, a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And yes, one, I guess, is considered a polynomial. It's just a constant polynomial. Um, okay, so like before, I try to factor the denominator as much as I can. So that's gonna look like this. And then I'm just gonna try to pull this apart into two separate fractions. So I wanna write this as something over x uh, plus something over x squared plus one. And well, maybe let, let's try to do the same thing as before. It's actually not gonna work, but let's see why it doesn't work. So I'm just gonna say, are there some constants here that you know, maybe when we add these together, we get one in the numerator. Okay, well, let's find a, uh, com a common uh, denominator. So I'm gonna multiply this by x squared plus one over x squared plus one. So I get a times x squared plus one. And then this one I'm multiplying by x over x, so I have b over x. And then my denominator is just x times x squared plus one. I want, I want my numerator to equal one. So let's look at this. Um, I have, um, well, b has to be zero, right? So b has to be zero. Um, a has to be zero because a x squared, there's no x squared term there. So a has to be zero, but that also kills off my constant term, right? So I, I just get zero on this side. I, I, there's no way I can get one on that side. So it turns out this, yeah, this, this doesn't work. And our problem is we, 
we need to actually be we, we need to be more flexible here so so whenever you have a quadratic in a denominator that you're trying to keep as a quadratic i mean this one we can't really factor over to real numbers at least what we should do is actually write a generic uh, linear polynomial in the numerator and it turns out that's going to give us enough flexibility to, to make this work okay so so well let's see let's see what happens now so so again yeah why why am i putting a linear polynomial here so this is because the uh, denominator is a quadratic okay what if my denominator were a cubic equation well you can imagine maybe what i would do um yeah i would i would put a quadratic equation in the in the uh, or quadratic expression in the numerator um, okay let's combine these over a common denominator so i'm going to multiply this one by x squared plus one over x squared plus one i get ax squared plus so a times one which is just a and i'm going to multiply this one by x over x so we get bx squared plus cx and i want this whole thing to equal one um, so again as before let's compare the different kinds of terms so we have the x squared terms so there's no x squared term on this side, right? So a, a plus b has to equal zero. And then if I look at the x terms, I get cx on this side. So c has to equal, there's no x term over here. So cx has to just be zero x, right? So c is zero. And then if I look at my constant terms, I have one on this side and my only constant term here is a. So one equals a. Well, this is a nice example, right? It actually just tells us what all the variables are right away. Or what all the, um, yeah, these parameters, A, B, and C are. And yeah, so what is B? B has to be negative one. Okay, uh, very good. So that means, so let me just copy down my original integral again. Um, this is going to become uh something of not this form that didn't work something of this form right so where a is one so we get one over x uh b is minus one and c is zero so just get minus x over x squared plus one so minus x over x squared plus one dx and this integral turns out to be easy to do or easier to do than what we started with uh, this first part is just natural log of x um the second part um Actually, I'd, I'd like you to try the second part. Um, this is a good, uh, this is good practice. It uses one of the methods we, we talked about today. So I'll say, yeah, try this. Um, maybe I'll pause for about five seconds and then I'll, uh, I'll give you a hint, but you should pause the video and try it. Okay, so the hint is, uh, the method is going to be u substitution. So u substitution, and you should choose u to be the denominator, x squared plus one. You should write down what du is, and um, yeah, try to do the u substitution problem, and um, yeah, end up with uh, this part here, and then you'll add an arbitrary constant as well. I might have forgotten some of those earlier. Um, but yeah, this is the method of partial fractions. And um, that concludes this uh, short review of integration techniques. Uh, these come up uh, quite often when solving differential equations, these ones that we talked about today. Okay, thanks for watching.